these California girls, man, they're going to be the death of my bank account. Oh my goodness, we got to buy organic peanut butter, we got to buy organic blueberries. We started a garden just so I can live. Then we got, we got a blueberry bush, we got a blueberry bush, and I'm like, don't those things have really bad thorns? And she's like, yeah, but this is a thornless one. And I'm like, you know that's a GMO, right? And she's like, we don't have GMOs. I'm like, do you remember those grapes that we ate last night that didn't have seeds in them? She's like, yeah. I'm like, how do you think those exist? She's like, well, certain grapes don't make seeds. Okay, so how do they reproduce? Well, they don't. Yes, they do. They're gen <laughs> genetically modified. GMO is not... Ca oh, this is not a video about GMOs, Christina. Please, with your vegetarian... Oh, you're going to be... Okay, so what is my art worth? What is my art worth? Now, when I was coming up with the, I had the concept in my mind, but when I was coming up with the title for this one, I was afraid that the title might be misleading. Like, like what if you're an art collector? What's that art worth? I don't know, I'm not in your house, I don't know what you own, so obviously that's not what it is. I mean, what is the art that you create worth? Now, this isn't a video on how to price your artwork. We've already done that. In fact, if it's okay, Will, if you could put that at the end slide. But I wanna talk about value and perceived value and what your art is worth. And I think that you need to kind of establish that before you can even worry about pricing. So, how do we figure out what your art is worth? I have it written down. You know, like, yes, and I talk about this in the pricing art, there is the, the actual cost that you wanna consider, like your art supplies and, you know, I, I always think about like, well, let's say that something takes me four hours to do. Well, if I earn, let's say, $10 an hour at work, that should be what your time at, at the minimum is worth to you. You could be earning $10 an hour doing something else, but since you're on your own time, at the very least, it should be, so if you work 40 hours, you earn $10, $10 an hour, that, that, that time cost at the very minimum should be equal to that, I think, if not a little more. So, you, you know, you're art supplies, your time, and, and then, okay, so you have that. The thing about art is, you can look at something, let me see if I can find a good example. Okay, hold on, I never do this. I, you're, I'm actually not wearing pants, so I'm gonna shimmy off. Yeah, you guys don't realize, when we do these real talks, it's just you and me, you and me and no pants. Okay, let me, let me show you this thing. This, we have this on a shelf, I don't know why. If I told you, that this was a bottle of, I don't know, scotch. Very good scotch, and I gave you a really good story. And I told you, you know, it, it, they even make it in such small batches that they sell it like this in a completely wasteful container. When This is actually an artist medium. It's, lest anybody believe this is a little thing of scotch, no. And I said, this is uh, actually $60 for this uh, single barrel, you know, whatever it is. And you're just looking at it, right? But. I don't know, that there's this perceived value, like, oh, okay, you know, like, maybe it's not for you, maybe, you know, you wouldn't buy it, but you believe it. You believe me that it's, what did I say, $60? I, I can't even remember what I said. But what if I just, you know, kind of hung this up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 this is just, uh, you know, a glass jar of, uh, you know, some scotch, I don't know, it's about 10 bucks. Well, okay, you gonna argue with that? No, but the point is, is that, when you look at certain things, it's hard to know what it's worth. And if I tell you a story, like I tell you about how this was painstakingly made, and I tell you, and I and I kind of romanticize it, you notice how you can believe it would be worth sixty dollars versus ten dollars. Why am I still holding this? What were we doing? You know, you can call it Perrier and charge four dollars, or you can call it soda water and charge fifteen cents. Perceive value. Oh, this is French, it's fancy. It's soda water, people. It's soda water. I say that, I do like Perrier versus San Paolo Green. I don't know why. The point is that there is this perceived value to something that is created with marketing, story, and, 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 and there's a strategy behind that. Art is no different. So I can pick up a painting, like let's say this giant painting behind me that you can only see the things that are impregnating my head. If I tell you this art is worth $400, I tell you this art is worth $4,000. It's the same art, but if you hear these numbers, I don't know, at least to me, I mean, unless I'm like way off track here, which I don't think I am, you, you kind of like, 
Okay, that's what it is. Now again, that doesn't mean it's what somebody's willing to pay for it. And at the end of the day, what your art is actually worth is what, you know, spoiler alert at the end of the video, is what somebody's willing to pay for it. But there is no quantifying way for me to look at a piece of artwork and say that is worth this. There's no story, there's no nothing, I don't know no background to it, okay? It's new to me. So I don't know who the artist was, I don't know what the materials that were used. These are all things that go into um, establishing a worth. Now we talked about perceived value briefly, and I wanted to tell you a little story about uh, a gentleman that you might have heard of if you're an oil painter uh, named Michael Harding. This is a, uh, I would call it a Cinderella story. This is, this is not going to be the norm. But look, you know, I always say in all my videos, you know, fortune favors the bold. You have to, you know, be courageous, especially in your artwork, to be, uh, to get attention. So I met Michael Harding back in 2003. He was uh, living in London at the time. He is a paint maker. For those of you that don't know who Michael Harding is, he makes Michael Harding oil colors. And I asked him about how he started his business. You know, he had a story, really good story, about how he made his paints. He made, at the time, every... Uh, every batch of paint that came out of that factory. And he talked about how he made it a certain way in small batches, like we talked about with that fake scotch. And, and the story is really great. It's a great story. And you kind of get romanticized in it. And he said, and I struggled for years to sell it. And I said, well, what did you charge for it? And he goes, well, that was the thing. He goes, I needed to beat Windsor Newton because Windsor Newton's like, you know, the, the, the king of the hill. And I needed to beat their price and nobody bought my paint. And for years, I had trouble selling my paint. And then something inside me said, but my paint is worth more than Winsor Newton's paint. I put more into it. And so I raised my prices. I raised them up significantly, and the paint flew off the shelf. Isn't that weird? He raised the price, but the perceived value went up, and that was part of it. How is he gonna sell a story of how this is so painstakingly made, but it's cheaper? The story has to add up. You know, and, and, and I think that for him, it was a time and place equation, which, which basically everything is a time and place equation. He was able to create a story and a product and with that price, give this feeling of prestige to his paint, which is a very difficult thing to do with art supplies because artists don't follow all the same marketing rules. You know, I went to school for marketing and you learn certain things, but I'll tell you that prestige doesn't play the same role as it would in, say, let's say you're buying a car for art supplies. A lot of it has to do with what you were taught to use or, you know, your philosophy on art. So yeah, so the prestige rules are a little different. However, we are still human and we all still kind of fall into, I, I'm not going to call it a trap, I mean, Michael Harding makes a really great oil paint, you know, but we, we like stories. We like we like to feel like we have something special, especially if it does, you know, if it performs really well. This is like becoming a Michael Harding pitch. I love you, Mike. Uncle Mike. Tell me to call him Uncle Mike. You know, he makes a very good product, and it, it is worth more in terms of how much it costs uh, to produce versus something that was more mass-made. You know, that, that, I think that's fair, reasonable. Sort of like why you would pay more for an original painting versus a print, right? There are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Um, just because something took, and this is kind of, believe it or not, contradict what I said earlier. Just because something took you a certain amount of time doesn't necessarily mean that that increases the value. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about that four hour analogy. Okay, this took you four hours to do and you figured all this out. Now, somebody else might be able to do something very similar, maybe even better and it takes them 20 minutes. But do you know why it took them 20 minutes and you four hours? Because they've been doing it for years and they have honed their craft. If you look at it that way and you charge the same thing, they are making more margin, more profit, because they are selling their artwork that took less time to produce. And that's just you know part of the, the process of, of creating art. You gotta practice and you put in those 10,000 10, hours and Katie, I'm filming here. I can't work with these people. You put in your 10,000 hours and you can do that. You can you can do something in 20 minutes and look, you earn it. And there's value in that. So you want to be confident when you're pricing your artwork and figuring out its value, but not cocky. You don't want to um, overinflate. You don't want to, you want to really figure out what you think something's worth. You might also get into this trap where you make several paintings. Let's say that you, you, you've painted 
25 paintings, and they're actually all the same theme, all the same idea, but there's just one painting that you absolutely love. You want to hang that on your mantle. You you want to, it's like really good. So let's say that you, you price all these paintings at $1,000, but this one painting means more to you. Well, you can keep that painting, or like you said, you can find out because the value is to you and not the customer, even though this is kind of similar to the other pieces, I'm gonna charge more for this because it's worth more to me and I'll be willing to part with it, I guess, if somebody wants to pay this. You wanna be careful with that. I mean, that, that, that is something, you know, you might wanna just consider not selling it if you, if you like it and just using it for your own marketing to show your, you know, your, your I thought you were waving at me, but you were just, you know, getting the sleep out of your eyes. I would say don't do that, you know, keep, keep with the theme, don't, because for them, the person, the, the people that are looking at your artwork, like, well, why is this one $3,500 and all the other ones are $1,000? They won't understand that. I think you're better off holding on to it. And in fact, you can hold on to it, let those other pieces sell, and then as you slowly raise your prices, which you can raise your prices if your artwork is selling, if you sell all your art, if you sell it all, right? I think it's very justified that you can increase your prices 15, 20%, but don't become a nudnik and mark it up twice as much. You're not gonna get that right away. When I was in school, we, we learned in economics about what they call the rudder effect. The Fed decides to raise interest rates or lower interest rates. They don't raise and lower it by 5%. They raise it and lower it by like a quarter percent, a half percent, these minor adjustments because like a like a ship the rudder you will turn but it takes time it's not like you know turning on a dime so you have to consider that so it's very important that when you do price your artwork at the beginning there that at the very least it's a price you can live with for a few years because you're not going to be able to just double triple your price if even if it's flying off the shelf it's going to be that rudder effect you have to do these minor adjustments now i'm not saying you know, quarter of a percent, but you know, 15, 20%, once you've sold out of something, don't jump the price, you know, to a point where it, it, it almost doesn't make sense. There will be sticker shock then instead of perceived value, right? Okay, let's just cut to me saying something else. B, C, D, L, M, N, O, P, X, Z, W? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, that's again, getting into pricing art and we're just trying to get started with what it's worth. What is it worth? And not to add pressure to this whole situation even more, but figuring out that value at the beginning is crucial. Because if you go in too high, if you go in way too low, you're gonna be stuck either with a lot of artwork that isn't selling, or you're gonna be stuck with no artwork because it all sold and you didn't make any money. So really, really, there's pressure. There was, I think maybe Jamie gave me the suggestion, but she won't remember, so I'm gonna take credit. This is my idea. There is this one thing you can do where if you really don't know what your artwork is worth, make a print of it, like a G clay or, or whatever, and just sell the prints and see what people are willing to pay. Usually a print is worth a fraction of what the original artwork is worth. So if you can sell a print for $10 all day long, well, you know, look, maybe the original is, is, is worth at least a couple hundred bucks. There was another way, if you watch the how to price your artwork, we talk about how you can use prints to figure out that actual number. But in terms of figuring out that value um, and, and, and that worth, it, 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 it transcends the price a, a little bit. I should have done this video before how to price your artwork because pricing is one thing, but establishing what your art is worth is very tricky. There's mathematical equations that we kind of go through in how to price it, but where you get the numbers to plug in for the A, B, C, and the algebra equation, it's not really that technical, don't worry. I know none of us are good at math <laughs> if you're watching these videos. We're not math people. I mean, maybe a little, some of you, uh, but the artists, you know, I, I can't count past. What can give something more value? Well, it's funny because, for example, I love certain things, very few things, okay? But nobody here will take away my love of all things Disney. And now, I used to say and Star Wars, but now it's one and the same. They're, they're all combined, all my, all my loves are in one. So I only actually love one thing uh, outside of my, my daughter and wife. I would say that if you decide to sell directly, like, you know, you wanna start your own website, you know, you wanna start, um, you know, selling things through, I don't know, the eBay or the Amazon or wherever you're gonna sell your artwork, that's gonna open up a much wider audience. Now, if you're, if you're casting your net over a wider audience, I think that it's a good idea 
well, all artists should have a gimmick, a niche, you know what I mean? But when you open it up to everybody, you're, you're opening up past art collectors. You know, people that are, want to invest in art go to galleries. But you might find some guy that had no intention of buying art, but you just happen to paint, I don't know, let's say famous sports figures or uh, famous histories, uh, battles in history. Like, you know, you paint Civil War paintings or, you know, things that, you know, represent the time. And a Civil War buff or a sports buff or, you know, a Civil War sports buff walks up and sees you and your art. They didn't plan on buying art, but it might speak to them. So I was just talking about how I love Disney. Um, I love Disney so much, I want to bring that Disney home with me. And I found that there were these candles that I could buy online. Now there's actually tons of companies selling candles that are Disney-scented candles. You know, they cost a little bit more. Of course, they're, they're soy candles, so they're safe, so my wife allows me to burn them in the house. So these candles, you know, are not huge, and they probably cost me about 20 bucks a piece. But I love them. They make me happy. They bring me joy. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you've ever read any of those books on, um, you know, how to clear clutter, tidying up. You know, the, the thing they drive home is you look at an item and you think to yourself, does this bring me joy? And if the answer is no, get rid of it. You know, if it's not bringing you joy. So, you know, I might, you know, have a, a bookshelf filled with stuff, uh, filled, filled with stuff. And it's like, okay, so there's a, a picture of, uh, for my wedding day. Well, like, that makes me really happy. So I'm like, well, that's on the protected list. And then I find this book, like this cookbook that I was given, I don't know, 10 years ago that I haven't really looked at. I'm like, this reminds me of when I was younger, and I didn't like when I was younger, but I don't like that I'm older, but, you know, being a kid really sucks. So I, I, I'm already, uh, I, can't, I hate this book. Okay, I gotta get rid of the book. But it helps you kind of figure out what brings you joy in your life. So these candles bring me joy. And so it's worth some more to me. So if you're casting that larger net, and you have an opportunity to do artwork that is going to bring joy to somebody, there will be more value for that market if you can find them. You know, I name a couple things, but I mean, literally, it can be anything. Like, you know, it's, you know I said sports figures. Um, it, can be, it can be trains or kittens. It doesn't matter. Something's going to speak to Jamie. I think I just said the K word, and that, that perked you right up. Trains, yeah. I said the T word. And you might feel a little bit like you're selling out if you go that commercial route, but no, you're trying to sell out of your artwork. You want to make the sales. You want to be a, a seller. And believe me, there's, I don't think you're being a sellout. I think you're being too hard on yourself if that even pops in your mind. You know, you're just trying to, we're all just trying to earn an honest living. We're trying to, um, you know, just, just, survive, be people, be, be humans. And we're going to be, make mistakes. We're going to have uh, errors. And, and now this has turned into some kind of weird, you know, like you can do it uh, video. But I guess that's what this is all about, you know? If you are one of those people that just love my shtick for whatever reason, and you are an experienced artist in terms of selling your artwork, please share your ideas of how you figured out the worth of your artwork. And, you know, yes, price is a is a part of that, but it's a bigger piece. The, the whole worth, price is just a slice of that pie. So, you know, if you have any input, any feedback, certainly you've gotta have something better than whatever I just said. Please share in the comments below. Make sure uh, that you uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's a little bell you can hit that'll be uh, notified, I was told, uh, when we post new videos. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, and please feel free to give me a thumbs down because I always feel like I deserve a big one. And if you haven't uh, started selling your artwork, put down what makes you nervous below. You know, what, what's your fear? What, what's holding you back from starting to sell? Is it some of the things that I mentioned? Is it completely irrelevant? You know, where are you at? It, it, it goes beyond. It's like you got to figure out what your art is worth, but you also kind of have to figure out what you're worth. And then I guess you have to figure out what I'm worth on Instagram. It might not Jerry. Like that one? Okay. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, Mike Not Jerry, where I have an Instagram account, and I, I, th th that's what it is. Follow me there. I'm not asking for money. Every time I go to these, watch these videos, it's like, go to my Patreon or whatever. I'm like, okay. But I'm, I'm here for you. So yeah, yeah, I'm here for you. And, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Ming, help. <laughs>